Hyundai Santa Fe of the second generation, 2006-2012 years of release. Good day if you are wondering is it worth buying a second generation Hyundai Santa Fe and what problems you may encounter during operation, then you are at the right place. So like most other cars from South Korea, Santa Fe cannot boast of exterior resistant paintwork. Chips and tiny scratches appear on it very quickly. The appearance of the car is also imprinted by the fact that some owners consider the Santa Fe to be almost a real SUV. Naturally, the examples, which often drove off the smooth asphalt, will have even more damage to the body. For many Santa Fe on the secondary market, with a detailed study of the body, it will be possible to find repainted elements at all. They do not always indicate that the car has been in an accident. The problem is that strong chips on the paintwork begin to bloom rather quickly, after which the owner can only repaint the damaged element. Moreover, if the work is not done well enough, after a while false eye of corrosion may appear again. Traditionally, the hood and the edge of the windshield suffer more than others. You should not ignore when examining your favorite specimen and the hatch. So far, there are not so many complaints that moisture seeps through its seals, but over time, the problem will surely become more widespread. The lower part of the Santa Fe body is surrounded by protective plastic pads that are not afraid of pebbles and sand flying from under the wheels. On the one hand, this is very good. On the other hand, it can be expected that corrosion will form under the protective plastic, which will remain unnoticed until the letter is dismantled for some reason. In addition, hotspots of rust can form in those places where the protective linings are in contact with the body panels. Unfortunately, most sellers in the secondary market will not allow to check what's going on under the protective plastic. It's much easier to see what is happening under the rapids. On heavily neglected examples of Santa Fe, there will probably be corrosion here. Weak spots on the Korean crossover can be considered the edges of the doors and the niche in the area of the license plate on the trunk lid. Some rust can be seen on the bottom of the boot lid as well. This happens due to the fact that the cover sags a little over time and begins to touch the bumper. The condition of the Santa Fe's underbody tells us even more about a car's past than its bumpers, hood and fenders. Rusty mounts and dirt-clogged cavities clearly indicate that the chosen specimen was deprived of due care. It's even worse if the car regularly went off-road, where it forced deep puddles. In this case, the side members in the rear of the body can almost completely rust through. Welding marks, which can also be found under the bottom, are also not good. Such interference on Santa Fe, which is carefully operated under normal conditions, should not be. As for other characteristic drawbacks, they include two rigid door seals. Because of them, you have to apply a fair amount of effort to close the door. Sometimes the door locks are to blame for this, the brackets of which require adjustment. Owners of Santa Fe also face fogging optics. In the vast majority of cases, fogging occurs after washing or during heavy rains. The windshield of the Korean crossover also requires attention. It's equipped with heating in the area of the wiper blades and may crack in winter due to a sharp temperature drop. Santa Fe will not be surprised by the quality of finishing materials. It's not bad, but nothing more. The steering wheel can definitely be considered a weak point. Its leather trim doesn't look too neat after 60-70 thousand kilometers. Fortunately, pulling the steering wheel is not a big problem now. Leather seat upholstery resists abrasion a little longer, but on most Santa Fe, considering the age and mileage of the cars, it looks far from perfect anyway. Naturally, none of the owners of the Korean crossover is ready to spend money on a full seat construction. The interior plastic in Santa Fe is not too expensive, so it's no surprise that it starts to creak over time. With the onset of cold weather, there are more extraneous sounds in the cabin. The rattling rear curtain also has a negative effect on acoustic comfort. Over time, extraneous sounds can begin to be emitted by the backs of the sofa. Santa Fe doesn't have a lot of electrical equipment by modern standards, but it can still bring some unpleasant surprises. Almost all owners complain about the standard audio system, which begins to fail for no apparent reason. In some cases, glitches appear in the form of a sudden reboot of the system, in others, in the form of a display shutdown. Not surprisingly, many Santa Fe's stock audio systems have long been replaced by something more modern and reliable. The mark of 150-160 thousand kilometers often becomes critical for the air conditioner drive motor, after which the choice of the direction of air flows is no longer discussed. A much less common problem is the sudden lighting of the ESP warning light. Fortunately, the error is reset very easily. It's enough to muffle and restart the car. There are many reasons why the ESP lamp may light up. 
First of all, it's worth checking the quality of the contacts at the point of attachment of the mask and also pay attention to the condition of the contacts of the brake pedal lights. Engines for the second generation Hyundai Santa Fe were offered for every taste. Buyers could choose between 4-cylinder and 6-cylinder petrol units as well as diesel force of different capacities. If you don't want to overpay for fuel, you can pay attention to the basic 2.4 liter petrol 4. Power of 174 horsepower is enough for moderately dynamic driving. Moreover, the capacity of the 2.7 liter petrol 6 is only slightly more, 189 horsepower. Both gasoline engines are considered to be quite reliable and their weaknesses have been studied very well by mechanics. Both engines, subject to the oil change interval every 10,000 km, are capable of serving at least 300-350,000 km until overhaul. Moreover, there are cases when engines require repair only after overcoming the mark of 400,000 km. The longevity of Santa Fe motors comes from technical simplicity. They are free from pressurization and direct injection, and the timing chain uses a durable timing chain. However, it is by no means possible to idealize the gasoline engines of the Korean crossover. To the mark of 100-120,000 km, a 2.7-liter engine can upset with burnt ignition coils. By the mark of 140-150,000 km, you should be prepared for the fact that the cooling radiator begins to leak. And all would be fine, but most Santa Fe owners do not notice a decrease in coolant volume for a very long time. At Santa Fe, the engineers used an unusual expansion tank, which always kept some coolant in the tank. At the same time, the owners may not even guess that there is no coolant in the rest of the coolant system at all. As a result, overheating of the power unit which ends with a deformed engine head. In addition, the 2.4 liter engine has some problems with the Bendix, which, with the onset of frost, can stop disengaging with the flywheel. Forcing the engine to stop several times helps to fix the problem, but it's nothing more than a temporary solution. Other typical problems include the failure of the starter, the resource of which leaves much to be desired, and the crankshaft oil seals prone to leakage. As the mileage increases, small oil smudges can be found on the sump of the power unit. Catalysts will need to be replaced closer to the 200,000 km mileage, and this is just the case when you cannot save on replacement in any case. A destructive catalyst is likely to cause scoring in the cylinders. They can also appear if you save on high-quality engine oil. Considering the age and mileage of most second-hand Santa Fe, it's definitely not a bad idea to inspect their cylinders with an endoscope when purchasing them. Another option is possible. On one of the previous owners cut out the catalyst for a long time. The situation in our conditions is very common. As for the chain drive of the gas distribution mechanism, it will on average require replacement every 130-160 thousand kilometers. The resource is far from a record, but this is fully offset by an acceptable price tag both for the timing kit itself and for the phase regulators, which usually change at the same time. Naturally, the cost of replacing the timing chain with the Gasoline 6 will be much higher. In general, maintenance of a 2.7-liter engine will be more expensive. For example, a trivial operation to replace spark plugs will require removing the intake manifold. We'll have to mentally prepare financially for a very serious fuel consumption. In urban conditions, a 6-cylinder Santa Fe can require about 20 liters of gasoline for every 100 kilometers traveled. The Santa Fe diesel engine is available in two versions, 150 and 197 horsepower. In general, the motors turned out to be very successful, but it should be understood that due to their age and high mileage, they will cause problem in any case. Moreover, many of these problems will require serious financial investments to solve. Whatever one may say, but a high-pressure fuel pump or a variable geometry turbine cannot be purchased cheaply, with all the desire. This is fully true for the injectors and the EGR system. For example, the price tag for a high-pressure fuel pump can easily go up to 80,000 rubles, for injectors up to 20-25,000 rubles. As a result, savings in fuel consumption can be completely ruined by a very expensive repair. If you refuel with a surrogate of unknown origin, then a quick replacement of the same fuel injectors will be inevitable. However, it's important to understand that these are typical nuances of operating any car with a diesel power unit and not the consequences of the unreliability of the Korean crossover engines. Buying a diesel Hyundai Santa Fe is by no means contraindicated, but in this case, the importance of high-quality diagnostics of the engine and fuel equipment before buying increases many times. If you use exclusively high-quality fuel, then the nozzles will serve 150-160 thousand kilometers without any problems. 
Usually for the same run many owners of diesel Santa Fe begin to notice a small knock coming from under the hood. Its source is the injection pump clutch, which as it wears out begins to emit unpleasant sounds. In addition, a source of extraneous sounds may be a drive belt tensioner requiring replacement. With the onset of frost, the knocking can be joined by a characteristic chirp coming from the fuel pressure regulator. It has long been proven that with proper preparation for the winter season, problems with the winter starting of a diesel engine can be reduced to zero. At a minimum, when the temperature drops, it's worth checking the condition of the globe plugs. Original Santa Fe candles in our conditions rarely last more than 100,000 km. Non-original candles, which are now installed on most crossovers, will not be able to boast of a large resource even more so. An important feature is better to contact professionals to replace the glow plugs. When replacing, grief masters often break off the candles. After which to remove the remaining piece of the candle, you have to dismantle the block head. As a result, not the most difficult operation of replacing candles is stretched indefinitely. For a mileage of 140-150 km, replacement of the glow plug relay is usually required. One of the weak points of the diesel engines of the Korean crossover is the crankshaft pulley with a damper clutch. There are cases when its replacement was required already with a mileage of 80-100,000 km. By a mileage of 120-130,000 km, unpleasant surprises can be expected from the vacuum regulator, which is responsible for the position of the blades inside the turbine. The fact that its stem periodically wedges can be guessed by the flying of the pressurization pipe, which is located at the inlet to the intercooler. As for the turbine, there are no complaints about it. Its resource of 200,000 km in our conditions can be considered very good. Very rarely Santa Fe owners are faced with breakdowns of the cylinder head gasket. Usually this trouble occurs in the range from 160 to 200,000 km. Two transmission options were available for the Santa Fe manual and automatic. Like powertrains, both boxes are considered good, but not devoid of a number of weak points. One of them is a flywheel in mechanics which is combined with a turbo diesel power unit. Its service life very rarely exceeds 80-100,000 km. The cost of a new flywheel reaches 40-45,000 rubles. The release bearing will cost about 5-7,000. For a non-original clutch kit, sellers will ask for at least 30,000 rubles. If you add the cost of work to this, then replacing the flywheel immediately turns into a very expensive pleasure. The weak points of the mechanical box include the seals of the axle shafts, which are prone to leakage. As a result, operating Santa Fe with a manual transmission turns out to be far from as cheap as it might seem at first glance. Not surprisingly, the demand for a Korean crossover with a manual transmission is quite limited. In the secondary market, the share of versions with the mechanics accounts for no more than 30% of all offers. Prior to the restyling, 4 and 5 speed automatic transmissions were available for the Santa Fe. After the upgrade, they were replaced by a 6 automatic of the A6MF2 family. All gearboxes, regardless of the number of gears with proper handling and oil change interval, every 50-60 thousand kilometers can serve no less than 200-250 thousand kilometers without problems. Of course, all other things being equal, the more complex 6-speed gearbox is more sensitive to both the operating temperature and the quality of the transmission oil. In addition, in the 6-speed box, the torque converter lockup is more act active, which contributes to more intense contamination of the transmission fluid. At first, the owners of Santa Fe with the 6-speed automatic complained about problems with the valve body and solenoids, but the Korean company was able to quickly solve them. Another possible problem is the breakage of the splines in the differential housing. To a greater extent, it's a characteristic of a 6-speed transmission, although it cannot be completely ruled out for earlier automatic machines. 4-speed and 5-speed gearboxes are generally more unpretentious, but you have to pay for this with frankly unhurried gear changes. The plug-in all-wheel drive, which is found in most Hyundai Santa Fe on our aftermarket, is implemented using a multi-plate friction clutch. The solution for cars of this class is traditional. In general, there are no complaints about the reliability of the coupling. With proper operation, it can easily withstand from 100 to 150,000 km. After 2008, Hyundai made minor changes to the clutch design, which made its life even higher. But it's important to understand that the Santa Fe is by no means designed to tackle serious off-roading. 
With frequent slippage, the clutch quickly overheats after which it is no longer necessary to talk about any increased cross-country ability. In case of failure of the coupling, the new unit will cost 70-80 thousand rubles. However, our mechanics have long been proved that Santa Fe clutch is quite maintainable. The restoration of the coupling, depending on the appetites of the specialists who have taken up this business, will cost from 8 to 15 thousand rubles. Another option for solving the problem is to immediately purchase a remanufactured clutch. In this case, we will have to part with the amount of 25-30 thousand rubles. The fact that the clutch is about to need to be replaced is indicated by shocks that occur when driving with the wheels fully turned as well as strong shocks. The remaining elements of the all-wheel drive transmission should not fail during careful operation. Usually in the interval from 100 to 150,000 km, the outboard bearing of the propeller shaft requires replacement. Its cost is not too high, about 6-8 thousand rubles. Closer to the mark of 170-180 thousand km, the elastic coupling of the propeller shaft practically develops its resource. The new clutch will cost the same 6-8 thousand rubles as the propeller shaft bearing. After a run of 150,000 km, you should periodically pay attention to the rear gearbox oil seal, which by this time is starting to snot little by little. The service life of the inner CV joint ranges from 100 to 130,000 km. A new drive assembly will cost at least 17-18 thousand rubles. An important caveat, on many used Santa Fe on the splines of the drive shafts you can already find quite serious corrosion. Unfortunately, it's impossible to check the condition of the inner and outer CV joints as well as the slots in the differential housing during the cursory examination of the specimen you like. As a result, a potential buyer should either negotiate with the seller for a thorough diagnostics in the context of a specialized service or mentally and financially prepare for the fact that someday the slots will be cut will have to deal with serious repairs. The Santa Fe's front suspension uses the classic McPherson design. At the back, Hyundai engineers used a multi-link suspension. In our environment, the suspension may seem a little stiff, but in this case it's worth making a reservation that this is true for the suspension with native consumables. Considering the mileage of cars exhibited in the secondary market, most of them have original parts replaced long ago, which sometimes has a very serious effect on the nature of handling and comfort. Support bearings are considered to be the weakest point in the front suspension. Often they can withstand only 50-60 thousand kilometers. At first native shock absorbers were also mercilessly criticized. It turned out that on our roads there are enough for only 30-50 thousand kilometers. Fortunately the Koreans quickly made the necessary changes, after which the resource of the shock absorbers increased to an acceptable 80-100 thousand kilometers. The crossovers of the first years of production were noted for not very durable wheel bearings, the resource of which rarely exceeded 70,000 km. The bearing has to be replaced in tandem with the hub, but it's hardly possible to go broke when replacing it. A new original part will cost only 5-6 thousand rubles. A quality non-original bearing can be found for 3-4 thousand rubles. Other consumables are also slightly more expensive. For example, suspension arms for Santa Fe will cost from 5 to 8 thousand rubles. From 4 to 5 thousand rubles will have to pay for shock absorbers. The resource of the front stabilizer struts is about 50,000 km, the rear stabilizer is about 70,000 km. The bushings will have to be changed every 70-80,000 km. Unfortunately for this, the craftsman will have to lower the stretcher a little, which increases the cost of the work. The rest of the consumables easily overcome the mark of 100,000 km. Ball joints are ready to serve up to 120,000 km, silent blocks and levers up to 160,000 km. An interesting feature, in the seven-seater versions of Santa Fe, the Korean company initially installed the rear shock absorbers, which provided for stiffness adjustment. They served the same 70-80 thousand kilometers as conventional shock absorbers, but at the same time they are much more expensive. Not surprisingly, many Santa Fe owners abandoned them in favor of ordinary ones and the next replacement. There are cases when the steering rack of the Hyundai Santa Fe began to knock even after a mileage of 20-30 thousand kilometers, but this is rather an exception to the rule. In the overwhelming majority of cases, the rail starts stepping closer to the 100 thousand kilometers mark. Usually the rack fails due to a strong leakage of its oil seals as well as an excessively worn right sleeve. As for the hydraulic power steering pump, there are a minimum of complaints about it. 
and to be upset if the pump still bust is hardly worth it. A new non-original pump will cost only 7-8 thousand rubles. Unpleasant surprises are not to be expected from the braking system either. The price tag for brake discs and pads is quite humane, and the interval for their replacement is comparable to that of most competitors. The main thing is not to consider the Honda Santa Fe a sports crossover, which is often the case for owners of modifications with a gasoline V6 under the hood. The Korean crossover is devoid of the traditional handbrake. The parking brake is activated by a familiar pedal for the sake of American buyers. It's imperative to check the handbrake before buying, since its cables can acidify with irregular use. For each of the two cables you will have to pay about 2000 rubles. Unlike the current 4th generation Santa Fe, the 2nd generation of the Karin crossover doesn't claim to be a premium car. And this is perhaps even for the best. The creators of Santa Fe didn't pursue newfangled technical solutions, thanks to which their brain child turned out to be quite reliable. Of course, there were some weaknesses and childhood illnesses, but they are not only well studied, but have been fixed on most cars long ago. There is no risk in buying a used Santa Fe, of course, provided that the selected copy will be diagnosed by specialists. Moreover, the same dead suspension should not at all scare away from the specimen, to which in all the other respects there are no complaints. Spare parts for it are inexpensive, so the discount made by the seller may well cover the cost of future repairs. If you are the owner, then be sure to leave a comment about this car. Your review will definitely help others with the choice of a car.